Talking about Keon Ellis here. Just played some audio of Zach Lowe. Talking about why he's so excited to see Keon Ellis play this year. Says that the Kings coaching staff is incredibly optimistic about one Keon Ellis. I think we already kind of knew that. But again, that might be a, a really good indication that, again, it might be Keon's job to lose when it comes to that small starting shooting guard spot. You know, I, I, I think it's, you know, if we just try and figure out, you know, where is Keon going to play? If he's not starting, what is his role going to be coming off the bench? It's going to be severely reduced, obviously. He's not going to get 20 minutes off of the bench. Maybe if he starts, he can get 20 plus, but he's coming off the bench. You're really just bringing him in as a spark plug defensively, a little energizer bunny, just kind of hoping to create chaos for about 15 minutes a game. I could see it. I just think it's going to be more impactful from the start. If you can lock down defense, if you can set the tone, which is something I think the Kings struggled with a lot last year, is they didn't dictate the physicality until really late in the season. But if they can dictate from the start of the game, no. We're going to have Keon Ellis picking you up full court, or at least half court, from opening tip. And good luck stopping De'Aaron Fox, DeMar DeRozan, and Demonis Sabonis the first seven minutes of the game. The Kings, hopefully, I mean, I think their their hope is to get up as it is with every team. But I think the plan is, hey, yeah. Throw the junkyard dog on him. Throw 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 Keon out on him, and then just just get out early. You know, Demar is a bucket. De'Aaron use that speed early, which is funny because we're gonna play some audio that has that in a second. We know Sabonis likes to go to work early in the games too. I think it's just getting the most efficient start possible, and then of course we got to figure out the third quarter too. Which maybe, again, that helps too. You know, Keon starts a third. Again, right attitude. Starting the intensity right off second half. You could see it. I mean, again, you know, you could just lean fully into the offense. You know, start Malik. Maybe start Kevin Herter. But I just think it makes more sense role-wise. I think you're maximizing everybody a little bit more if you start Keon. Kevin Herter is going to come in and shoot anyway. That's what he's going to be there to do. I don't think he's most efficient coming off the bench. It's probably a little bit more of a gunner role for Kevin Herter if he's coming off the bench. Better make sure he's making shots if uh, if he's going to be coming off the bench. But I can see it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We're not that far off. We're not that far off from finding out. And you know what? We just found out, too, from one Keon Ellis. What makes De'Aaron Fox so hard to guard? You know, we all know he's incredibly fast, but what is it like to actually be across from De'Aaron Fox as Keon Ellis is frequently during practices? Here's Keon describing what exactly makes it so difficult to stop a guy like De'Aaron Fox. A guy like Fox, like same, like he's not really going to kill you from the three, but he will if you give him enough space. But the thing is, though, like he's fast as shit, So yeah. like... You can give him space, and he will still find a way to blow by you. A lot of guys, you can't go on one-on-one, but it's like, say, like a LeBron or a Giannis. When they're coming downhill, it's like, let's build a wall, and like we need to stop them. But it's the exact same for a De'Aaron Fox. Like, any transition one-on-one, -on -one, you're not stopping it. Like, he hit a Euro one time. Oh, my God. Like, he Euro from left to right, but then jumped back left. But the defender jumped. It, it was crazy. It was, I'm like, yo, like, this is... <laughs> This is some some top some top of the line yeah. stuff. He'll slow it down and then like he'll speed it back up. Yep. And it's like, like I said, especially for guys who don't want to guard, like you're not going to react to that. There you go. I mean, you really can't put it better than that. And again, I can't recommend enough. Go listen to uh, Keon sit down with Deuce and Mo. Uh, just the, just the definition of an open conversation. I mean, they're they're just talking hoops. It's not really much of an interview as it is just. People who love basketball talking basketball. And uh, I think it's great. And I love to hear Keon describe there so perfectly, so well, what makes De'Aaron tough to guard. Him comparing De'Aaron to Giannis and LeBron, I love it. I've never heard anyone say it before, but it makes sense. You know, as those guys use their physicality to get to the rim, De'Aaron's speed is equal to their strength. 
I really think it is. I think it's that special. That in the same way that you can't just, I mean, Keon describes building the wall, right? you got to build a wall in order to, just a wall of bodies that they have to crash through. And that's the only way you can stop De'Aaron. Because Keon kind of spills a secret there that nobody's really trying to defend like that. You know, maybe if it's a very key possession, you're going to give your 100%. But it's not even just the straight 0 to 100 speed. And we've heard De'Aaron talk about this specifically when it comes to uh, adapting his game. It's not the zero to 100. It's the zero to 75 to 25 back up to 75 that he talks about. It's the, okay, I, I'm keeping up with him. Okay, wait, he just hit me with a little hesitation. Now I'm on my heels. And by the time he's ramping back up to go full speed again, after the hesitation, I can't react fast enough. And that's what makes De'Aaron so lethal. And I'd love to, I'd love to see it more. I'd love to see it more, but I do think it's really interesting to hear it described in a Giannis in a LeBron kind of tier in the same breath. And then that Euro step he's talking about for those who don't remember that was on one Kyle Kuzma. He hit this nasty. I've never seen anybody do this before, but he goes, Outside foot, inside foot, so his right leg plants right outside the charge circle. And then normally you'll see people kind of go that direction with the layup. The, the, the crossover move is really the step from left to right. But De'Aaron's cross-up move in that Euro was really the, the plant from the right into the air he goes over to the left side. And it's incredible. I mean, you can find it somewhere on the internet. I'm sure if you just type in De'Aaron Fox Eurostep, it'll pop up on YouTube. But it's it's special. It's really, really special. So there you go. There's Keon talking about De'Aaron and what makes De'Aaron so hard to guard. Coming up next, in the next segment here, we'll, we'll tell you who Keon says, besides De'Aaron Fox, is his toughest matchup. And also, what's been Keon's favorite play? What has been his favorite moment of his NBA career so far? 